putting up a new <laughs> back up the entire time. <laughs> it looks good. We need some logoage there. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Hello, uh, friends, oh, we started? family, and whoever else watches these things, whoever you are. I am Chris Corman, sports editor of the Herald Times, joined by Dustin Dopirak. That okay. was a serious look, Dustin. You like it, it is. It is. Oh, I didn't know we were on. Well, we're on. Either. We're on. We actually let we Stu should, do that? Okay. Yeah, we should probably get to the football that right. we need to talk Quickly. about. Bill Lynch press conference today, uh, and a practice. Mm -hmm. First of all, let's go over what Bill said. Um, Hit me with it. Well, um... I was less interested in what Bill said, what the injury report said. Okay. To be totally honest well, then with you. let's go there. Then. Uh, that's you that's the direction. I'm, I'm taking it there. Uh, Will Patterson, Donnell Jones, Chris Adkins all out. Adkins could be out for a while, they're saying. I think that's the, you know, the, I guess the biggest development for, for the coming week. I mean, you know, they're, they're playing an offense that likes to throw it a lot. Yep. Two significant injuries in the secondary and, and possibly a, a third, as we found out at practice. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's going to be one that keeps Richard Council out, but at least kept him out for practice. And uh, yeah. he was having a hard he was time out completely last week no, having practice. No pads. Well, yeah. true. Yeah, so true there's story. that. Uh, <laughs> no doubt about it, I don't think. Uh, and, you know, they're, of course, sticking by the company line and saying, you know, uh, well, just next guy's got to step up. So who are their replacements? Well, obviously, Carrington becomes the uh, the, the third linebacker, moves in for Patterson. I mean, he obviously, they, they had said time and again that they basically have four starters, which is true, but, you know, somebody then eventually got to take some of his reps just to give, you know, somebody, uh, you know, a couple plays off. And I guess that goes to Chad Shearer, who hasn't had Rich, a whole Richard freshman. Like, yeah. Right, who hasn't had a whole like, heck of a lot of playing time uh, at all on, on actual defense. I mean, he's obviously been on, uh, done some special teams work and that right. sort of thing. Sure. We haven't seen a lot from him otherwise. The one thing that uh, Bill did say is that Leon Beckham will probably be back this week. He's missed the last couple weeks with an ankle injury. They said there's a good chance he'll be able to play. Second string um, middle linebacker. Right, if necessary, yeah. to provide some more depth. So that kind of helps. But obviously, you know, I guess it goes back to Colin Taylor as uh, the, uh, the nickelback. You know, the guy who will play, I guess, deep safety when, sure. they, when they go to three safeties. And, um, you know, obviously, Council is going to start. And they'll be looking at, I guess, uh, Adrian Burks and Andre Legron as the next line, as next cornerbacks after that. So, you know, they, trouble. They, they go back pretty deep, you know, on defense. And it's, you know, against a you know, spread team that's going to throw it a lot. Right. Lynch, uh, you know, interesting to me, Lynch said he had, you know, there's not many programs he has more respect for than, than uh, Northwestern. Uh, just for what they've done and for their young coach, uh, Pat Fitzgerald, mm. obviously a linebacker for those uh, mid-90s teams that, that really kind of brought Northwestern to the forefront. Yeah, uh, brought yeah. them back from the complete and utter The, in, the Indiana brink. Right. The, 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 <laughs> yeah, the, you know, more or less. Separated themselves from Indiana mm -hmm. uh, for at least some time. Yeah. Uh, but the Hoosiers, having said that, have, have had a lot of success against Northwestern in the last two years. Right. Uh, beat them last year and probably should have won the year before. That was the... Uh, it's most remembered for Ben Chappell coming off the bench. Kellen Lewis was hurt momentarily. Came mm. Chappell came off the bench, uh, came off the bench through an interception. Six and got picked. All right. Uh, um, so, I don't know. What do you think yeah. going into this game? I mean, what did you see from the team today? Uh, how they uh, feel? Well, I think uh, you know they, they looked a lot more like they did last week in practice as opposed to the previous week. I mean, I, it, they didn't seem quite as jacked up because it, it didn't seem like they were trying to make a point as much as they were trying to make a point last week. Right. Uh, but Lynch, you know, kind of did some of the same things at the end of practice that he'd been doing. I mean, they went to, you know, ones on twos, twos on ones, and then they went to, they, they ran the scout out there. I mean, just trying to keep that level. Yeah, of competitive, there, keep it live, you know. Yeah, and that was a big element. thing he said today also right. was that, uh, you know, there's just got to be this level of competition in practice. You know, this, there's this gotta be constant competitive situations, and that's what's going to keep everybody uh, involved as opposed to just going over schematics and just thinking about X and O's. There has to be some level of, you know, you got to beat somebody out today. You got to keep your job, sort of thing. Right. Um, so I mean, I think they've, you know, they look pretty good. They they looked, uh, you know, more lively. Uh, you know, I, I guess the issue is going to be is is Northwestern as bad at running the ball as it, it apparently seems they are. Right. Um, and you know, if they can't, you know, if they can't run the ball, can North, you know, can Indiana stop them from passing it? You know, get to Kafka enough that uh, that causes causes a problem, or will he be able to really throw it all over? Them? Especially with so much, I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many uh, coverage issues. You know, just guys yeah. who, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, uh, Colin Taylor's you know, worked hard. I wrote my column about him, and a guy who knows where to be, but he's just not been in many game situations. Same thing with Legron. Right. Same thing with Burks. If they have to turn to him, 
right. as you said, council has struggled. Mm -hmm. uh, if the linebacking core is, is shuffled a little, it's just going to be, you know, I, I think it, it has the makings of a really interesting game. It could be. I mean, you, you know, first off, you do have to kind of realize what kind of north, you know, wide receiver just Northwest, Northwestern is dealing with. We're not talking about a bunch of, you know, 6'5", lob it up to them, you know, jump ball type guys that are that are also guys that are just going to straight burn you on seam routes. Oh, like no, it's a very patterns. it's a very precision yeah. offense. It's yeah. a, you know, it's a true spread, as yeah. Bill Lynch called it. And right. There's guys who, but mm -hmm. smart guys, you know, I mean, right. there's no way to get around talking about Northwestern football without talking about, you know, yeah. they got cerebral players. Right? Yeah, they do. I mean, their uh, leading receiver was a, is a D3 transfer. Right. You know, had never caught a pass, had caught one pass going into this year. He's caught 50 balls this year. He's 5'11", 180. Right. Uh, you know, like, a guy they said isn't that fast, but is quick, but just, you know, just manages to make plays and gets, you know, gets by a, a ways on intelligence. You right. know, just running the right routes and being in the right place and that sort of thing. And that's, so, you know. That's the type of thing they need to be prepare, prepared for. Right. Now, you uh, you worked on an interesting story today. You're actually in the middle of writing it. I have uh, disrupted you. I don't know about you. in the middle of it. Well, you're getting, you're there's getting a, there. There's right? not a lead written. I, I, I barely sat down. You'll find one. I'll get it eventually. But it's about an IU wide not receiver, you. DeMarla Belcher. Yeah. Uh, who, um, you know, had a, a really good uh, freshman year, a great freshman year, showed a lot of, uh, you know, was very advanced. You know, he came in right. and he knew he was a basketball guy who was going to be raw, but but sort of seemed to, for whatever reason, get it mm -hmm. a little bit quicker than almost anybody else uh, in that freshman class. And yeah. uh, and then this year, you know, he I, I heard him talking to you and saying, admitting, you know, saying I was MIA for right. a couple games. Mm -hmm. seems like he sort of... Yeah, you know, had to had to readjust or teams adjusted well, to him. Part part of it was, you know, I, I guess I I asked Billy that question. You know, he said he right. felt like he was kind of MIA, and even Demarlo said, you know, I knew I really wasn't gonna get the ball that much in those games. It, it's less, you know, that uh, that he wasn't doing anything. It was more that the way just teams were playing. I mean, they're All not right. necessarily double yeah. covering him or saying, okay, we've got to take Demarlo Belcher away. But well, he's been their ex like, He's been their ex the receiver. receiver so and that's just you know the ex receiver just wasn't getting it. Other guys were getting open. You know, right. they were leaving. And that's kind of why, why DeMar well, the ball, but you still need to get him the ball because it's he's defense is knowing that Belcher can yeah. do those sort of things. Like we right. saw, you know, not only catch the ball, go up and get it, but then make right, a move, make a play uh, mm -hmm. after after the catch. Yeah. He, he had an interesting background. Why don't you take us through that? Just well, how he, his sort of how he ended up here playing. Basically, football. I mean, he didn't. Uh, you know, he, he said he played freshman year, maybe you know, played like some little league ball. I guess was the, was the word he used. And then you know, after freshman year, he just decided to go with basketball. And uh, it wasn't until senior year that they kind of convinced him, hey, you know, there's a bunch of 6'5 small forwards out there. There's not as many 6'5 wide receivers. You've got a better shot. You know, and he was getting mostly offers from Mac schools, and he had some issues with uh, NCAA qualification. So, I mean, he had to go to a prep school, basically, and it was like, all right, well, I'll kind of see who offers me first. And, you know, Indiana came through, basically, with the football offer, and he just kind of went with it. I don't think he wanted to be in prep school anymore once he, you know, once he qualified. But he just kind of went with it. And, you know, just came in, and, and, and I guess what Billy said was that, you know, he wasn't quite as raw as we expected, despite the fact sure. that he was a guy that had just started uh, playing football. But, you know, but again, he still was raw. You know, not maybe not as bad as expected, but he still was. I mean, like, you know, Tannen Doss said, you know, he was sloppy, and Chapel says, you know, he still has to do things in terms of... He's still got basketball you know, habits. He still has basketball That's habits. Nice. I mean, Billy was just, was just saying that, you know, he, he holds the ball out of lanes, right. you know, like he's dribbling or something like sure. that, you know, so... So those kind of things. I mean, it worked out the other day when you, you, you know, on Saturday, basically crossed the guy over. Right. You know, it was more or less what That's, that move was. He got to the lane. Yeah. He yeah, he did. Probably he got to the lane. Exactly. Someone, someone's ankles got, yeah. you know, messed up. Well, well anyway, you can read that whole story uh, tomorrow. Hopefully. It's good. Hopefully. hopefully. You know, what's this hopefully stuff? You know, I'm just go, go write it. Go, go now. Go. Uh, yeah, read that tomorrow. You'll be able to find it, uh, uh, HTO, on, you know, online. Uh uh, Hugh should link it from Hoosier Morning. That's a lovely new feature that I'm really enjoying. Mm. Uh, he's doing a great job with that. Yeah. Uh, you should be able to find that there and any other Big Ten news, uh, some Northwestern news he'll, he'll have there for you. Uh, tomorrow, big day, Tom Crean will be updating us on the progress of his team. It is a good five days into practice, I expect. So much will have changed. Right, I'm yes. Uh, we'll probably have the starting lineup for you by tomorrow. Definitely. So be here for that. Uh, more football practice, of course. We'll interview defensive players get their take on Northwestern. Uh, it's always a party here. It really is. It really is. Yeah, there's always something going on. So we will see you then. Thanks. Take care. Bye. All right, we finished our background. You can read it, man. You can read it. It looks good.